Major funding for this program provided by the West Virginia Arts and Humanities Council. Dad wouldn't let me use it, Fred. <laughs> no, if I, if I moved it or took it out of the case, he'd know me. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared of him, too. <laughs> <laughs> And Edwin was the one that's most yeah. famous, isn't Oh, it? yeah, he is famous. He never would do nothing else but play a fiddle. <laughs> Wouldn't do nothing else. They're picking good, you know. And I'd watch which way they set them keys, you see. And I finally, you see, I got the sound of it, and then I, I learned the tune. <laughs> and the first tune I believe I ever learned to hit a note on was that hot corn, cold corn, hand around the Jimmy John. I believe what they used to call it, they don't call it that now.
So when I first met Sherman Hammonds, I was six years old, and my dad had taken me fishing up on Williams River. We used to go up there every year for trout fishing. And I remember Sherman would drive up and down the Williams in his old green pickup truck and sell fish worms to all the fishermen and stand on the bank. And when I met Sherman then, I had no idea he played banjo. And up until three years ago, when me and Dave and Tim began playing, I still had no idea that he was playing. And the Huntersville Festival, which is one of the first festivals we ever went to, we saw Sherman and his brother, Burl, and Maggie, and Lee Hammonds playing. And Sherman was playing the banjo, and I remember that was some of the best music I'd ever heard. And I think from that point on, Sherman began to influence our music. And probably the main thing that he'd influence is, is the way you play old time music. He says that if, you, if you're gonna play it old time, play it the old time way. If you get a different phrase, or if you play a certain part of the song different, he'll tell you, now that's not the way they did it, boys, back then. And he'd, he'd tell you if, you make, <clears throat> if you're making a, a mistake or doing it different from what he does. And he'd, and it's, you really appreciate somebody that can pass it the way that he learned it from, well, he's 75 years old, and he's passed it down that far, and it's probably the same way they played it 200 years ago, and you know that you're playing it the way they did then, and you can appreciate that. Okay. Now, that's where Bear's been down in here, isn't it? On this yeah, apple tree? yeah. That's what we're going down here for, the love for you. <laughs> Bear me. Now he's climbed up, climbed up this tree and uh, gone for apples, apple. right? Right, right. They won't do nothing this year. That's what they call lapping a tree. You see those limbs broke off in the top, them yeah. dead limbs? And that's there. That broke off all the way yeah. up in there? Yeah. You and Joe Roy uh, trapped one up in yeah, here, didn't you? Yeah, right out there. Then we had a trap set there. Didn't get in there any. <laughs> <laughs> How often they, will they come to an apple tree like this? Oh, they'll come often. What? But there's apples. They, they sure love apples.
about music. You take a fella of he likes music and he keeps practicing, you know, keeps, I believe he can learn it good. Most of the time, you see, was the reason why I didn't learn to play the burrow down here, I was a, away, you see, at the lumber camps where they had no music. See, that's where I spent uh, most of my life till I got up to be a a right smart old man. You know, I used to be, when I, when I saw in the mountains, you know, back in the woods, I could just uh, go to a tree and I'd tell you whether it was fit to cut or not by the bark. Of course, uh, uh, same way by driving grabs in the woods. Why, you, could, you know, you had to line your grabs up, you know, you had to learn that stuff. Come up the river to the slip, and I said to my dad and sister, I said, I believe I'll get out there and sing a while, and I'll overtake you. Sign, gin, looking for gin, sign? Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of it here then, but it was worth nothing. Mm -hmm. I got out there, you know, and got, just went above the road and began to find it, you know. I loved to. Uh, Love to dig that stuff. And there wasn't no roads now, nor no machinery, nor nothing in this country then. Nothing but ending paths, that's all there was. Mm -hmm. And I heard something coming right over the hill, right over me, you know. And I said to myself, what in the damnation is that? <laughs> <laughs> And it kept getting louder, you know, them airplanes and I could hear good and as young. Oh, yeah. And it kept getting louder and louder. The longer I listened that, and, uh, the louder it got. And after a while it got so loud, you know, uh, I know there's nothing else but the devil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why a man would think that, would Yeah, we never seen uh, it before. And after a while, you know, I got scared. Got, you know, excited. For they wasn't no nothing in there, you know. Seemed like I was just a bouncing up in the ground. And I said to myself, <laughs> had a better run or he's a coming after me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was about, oh, I was maybe 300 yards from the path that came up the river. So I broke and run down to that path. And when I come down to the path, I could see up and down the river, you see. And uh, I thought that they're coming right down the river. I know sure as the devil. <laughs> and it was the way I was a going. They had me hemmed up. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, finally, I kept standing. I didn't know which way to go, you see. 
and I happened to look up. But I, yet I never saw an airplane, you know. I didn't know what it was. And I seen those two things, there's two of them. A flying looked like they right, looked about to look your hand or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I kept listening and turned my ears, you know. Finally, I heard that noise was coming right from there. And I said, think myself, what in the devil is that a going there? <laughs> I'm making that noise. <clears throat> Long as I thought about the scare I got, and I broke to running. It looked like them planes were standing perfect still. And <clears throat> I run, you know, low, I overtook them before they got to the... And I said to my dad, I said, what in the devil was that? I said, went over there. I said, I believe the world's are coming to an end. Why, he said, uh, do you know what that is, what that was? And I said, no, I don't know what it was. Well, he said, that's the airship. Hmm. <laughs> well, I said, dang the airship then. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever rode an airplane? Yes, sir, I have. <laughs> What'd you think? Yes, of? sir, I have. No good. <laughs> in lots of other places, you know, but I ain't satisfied. I'd rather be here. I can say I can take and go to another state or something, maybe enjoy myself for a week or something like that, but I won't bath. <laughs> well, it's just practically where you're raised, you yeah. know. Uh, it seems more like home to you.
I've enjoyed my life all my life, uh, and I know I can't be here very much longer, and so I ain't got a thing to worry about uh, about my life, or I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed myself just good. Yes, sir, I have. Major funding for this program provided by the West Virginia Arts and Humanities Council.